Hi third graders, our lesson today um, will require a piece of paper and something to write with. We will be drawing our governor today, Gary Herbert. Um, our standard talks about ways that the government helps our community and um, so we're going to draw him as we think about that a little bit. We're going to come to the very middle of our page here and draw kind of a U shape for his face so it's going to come <clears throat> curve down to the chin and back up on the other side. Okay, and then we're going to come up here to the forehead <clears throat> and we'll do um, for the hair just a little curve down in the middle and then we're going to curve up and down, up and down on the sides. Okay, and then over the top we're going to have a curved line coming down to the um, about as long as the hair in front here. And then we need to put the ears, so curved line on either side. <clears throat> and then near the top of the ears, we're going to do some eyes. So curved line over and under. I'm going to make um, you can add more detail to the eyes by drawing in the curved lines inside and the pupils. Okay. And then we have um, the eyebrows. We can do a shape that curves over the top, comes back around, and same thing on the other side. And then um, we'll do the nose. So we've got two curved lines coming out to the sides and a curved line at the bottom. And then we can curve these edges under like this. Okay. And then for the mouth, um, this is going to be a picture while he's talking. So we'll kind of have his mouth open here. Uh, he's giving a a talk to the state of Utah um, during the pandemic. And then from here, we're gonna do a straight line angling out and down away from his head on both sides. <clears throat> we're gonna draw his jacket so it's gonna come near where the face and that line met. Another angled line down and the same thing on this side that comes down like this. And in uh, right under the chin, we can do two opposite lines coming out like an upside down V. And then curve those back to touch the jacket. He's wearing a tie. So here's, you can draw the tie like this. And the bottom of the tie comes out like that and then for um, this hand will be coming up he's talking and using his hand so we're going to draw an, a line angling in like this and then another line coming down and I'm not going too far because right here his hand is coming up so right here about between the shoulder and the tie, we're going to do a thumb, kind of like thumbs up right there. And then um, under the thumb, we're going to do a curved line and another curved line back like this. And then the same thing three more times for his other fingers. These bottom ones are a little closer together. It's because his hand is curved around like this. And then we're going to extend that hand with a, um, a line down like this and curve around here for the jacket. And then we need to connect the hand with the arm. So we're going to bring the jacket 
from to connect from the wrist to, over to this part of the arm and down and then we can connect up to where the shoulder was all right so we can kind of see how his arm is coming up from his elbow okay and then on the other side uh, we have a bit, we're, I'm having us draw some of the things that are in front first since I'm using pen and I can't erase so next we're gonna draw a microphone here so a circle and then the rest of it is like a rectangle maybe a more like a cylinder here and then we're going to kind of draw there's something connected to it here that's going to angle back down and then we're going to come across with a straight line from where we ended his elbow it's like it's kind of resting behind this podium and then we'll come down and over so that way um, we've got like a thicker part to our podium and then we'll draw the side of it so it's going to angle down and back with another vertical line here and going all the way down and then at the corner I'm going to bring the line all the way down as well. Okay so here's our podium and there's the microphone that he's using and I'd like to extend his elbow out a little more something about the way his arms sitting is not looking quite the way I wanted it to and then we'll come down from the jacket here okay and then we'll on this side now we can draw the other part of his jacket so we're gonna go down actually all the way down behind that microphone and then this part this sleeve just angling out a little bit we can't see that hand because it's behind all right and now we'll continue this jacket down all the way to the bottom I need to go back in and let's put the lapels here so we, it angles out in farther out and then it's going to come angling all the way down to here and then the same thing on the opposite side angle out in out and then angle all the way down to here all right so now we're going to add a couple details um, behind him to show kind of who he is and where he is um, actually yeah okay so we're gonna do it behind and in front we're gonna draw part of a circle from about the middle or the side of the page curving down and then just imagine where the rest of the circle is coming through it's not gonna be perfect but that's okay okay so there's it's like a circle kind of looks like a big moon behind it and then inside we're gonna draw another circle leaving some space in between the two edges okay and then um, around these it says the great seal of the state of Utah and we're gonna just um, turn our paper as we write so the great this is gonna go off the page so seal of the maybe I'll finish writing the here State of Utah. <clears throat> State of Utah. That part is also going to go behind. Okay, and then on this seal, what we have is an, a bald eagle at the top here. So I'm going to draw a curved line. We'll do two wings coming down like this. Um, under here we have the beak, the head, and the neck like this, the eye, and then we've got the wing 
connecting. And then um, we have a symbol here. Uh, we've got an oval with some arrows pointing out of it. Okay. And then we have um, some flags. Okay. Two flags. These are American flags that come down like this. And they actually come to more of a point at the bottom. And um, the blue right here. And then we have so the pole of those flags like this. And we have a beehive in the middle. So I'm going to do some just curved lines that keep coming down that way. And then... Um, Next to the beehive on both sides, but I can only see this side. We have a few white flowers. Okay, and then we've got um, the bottom of the flag here. We have a little rod, and then that's where the bottom of the flag comes down. And it would be the same on the other side if we could see it. Maybe we can see a little bit. So he's he's giving a speech at this podium with the Great Seal of Utah behind of the state of Utah. And there's actually the same seal right here. So if you want an extra challenge, you could go ahead and draw that again here in the front. But just for the sake of time, we're gonna stop here. And so um this is what this is who has been giving our state um, these press conferences and letting us know what we should do at this time um, with our stay home stay safe procedures and you might have seen him on TV talking and um, you could ask your parents if they've listened to him as well so some of the things that the community um, receives from the government includes getting information. Um, the government uses tax money to um, fund different programs that we need. And also um, just the, there's many other things, organizing um, plans, and we're kind of in the middle of that right now. So you can be thinking of more things that the government does to help us. And I'm going to be using a tissue today to spread my chalk pastel. If you want to use chalk pastel, you can. Um, if not, you can use whatever else you, you have at home to color today. So um, to get started with our chalk pastel, remember that we use just the tip if we're doing a small area. So this hair part is a smaller spot and so I'm just trying to use the tip of my of my pastel. And then when I put my finger in here and wrap it up, then I have a tool to blend with. If you also have a rag, just an old piece of fabric that you could use, that's perfect for this. Um, as long as it's something that you it can get dirty and then you can wash it later. And actually do, okay, if we have a bigger area, um, and he has brown hair, uh, light skin, so we're going to use those colors for him. If you have a bigger area, like the face, then you ha um, don't need to be as careful to use the tip of your chalk pastel, and you can actually uh, oh let's do the hand too while we have that color ready but you can use a little bit more of a broad side of the chalk and then we always want to blend it into the paper so that it's not all dusty because then it will get on other things that we have Okay. 
and if you're blowing the dust off like I am, make sure you know where you're blowing it on to. <clears throat> like you're not getting something dirty that you need to have clean. All right, and so um, you get to choose the colors that you want to do for what he's wearing. Probably has lots of different ties, so you could probably choose whichever color. I think he was wearing a red tie in the picture that I um, looked at for this drawing. Which is a common tie color. Okay, and then we have his jacket. His shirt was white, um, but he had a darker jacket on. So uh, you could choose like a, a navy blue or black or dark brown, something like that. That's usually the color of a professional um, suit. Same thing here, so on the edges, I want to make sure I'm really careful when I get up to those as I color. <clears throat> but then for the middle part, you can just kind of fill it in. But this would be a great conversation you could have with your parents um, or your teacher about what are things that Utah's governor is and Utah's government, not just the governor, but the government is doing right now to help the community. And um, that's also true of the federal government. You could, you could say the same thing. What is the federal government? So the president of the United States and other <clears throat> federal offices, what are they doing to help communities right now? current event research project. Okay. Okay, so I got this filled in and it looks okay. But when I, when I rub it in, then it's going to blend a little more. And so then it will look a little bit more like the actual texture of a suit. So one of the things that the government is doing is um, making sure that people are safe and healthy during this time or trying to help with that. And so the governor um, works a lot with the other leaders of the country, of the, of the state, including the state superintendent of schools. And together they decided, along with lots of other um, people who've studied the issues that we needed to have school from a distance, distance learning instead of having people go in to schools. And that's just to be really safe right now. And so when he, um, when he made that announcement, I believe it was in a, at a podium like this. So he'll do a press conference and let people know some of the latest decisions that have happened um, about things we're doing to help the community. And um, it's really neat how the schools have been working um, together across the state to make sure that we can keep learning and um, still be healthy and happy at this time. Just a few more details here. Details on the face. And um, you can just dab the um, 
colors if you if you if you don't if you want to make sure that you're not spreading the color too far then you can just dab it like this and then it um, kind of pushes it into the paper without getting it all over depends on what part you want. okay and then here's our podium um, I'm gonna put just a yellow undertone <clears throat> And then I'm going to go over it with brown because <clears throat> I want it to look like wood. Wood often has like other colors in it. <clears throat> so I'm going to mix that yellow and brown together. what kind of color it makes. Hmm. All right, I added kind of a chestnut color to it. And look at that. It's kind of a fun wood color. Okay, <clears throat> so on the back wall here, this is actually in, um, it's in black and white or gray and white in the back. The seal also can be made with color. And by the way, if you need a break, this is a great time to stop the video, go do something else, get, get some new energy, and then come back to this later. Um, you can always start it again later. Okay, so I would like to use a little more color in the background than just black and white. And so I know that the colors of the flag are red, white, and blue. So I'm going to do that part first. I'll show you here. So here's my stripes coming down on my flags. And um, same thing, I don't want to blend those. I want those in straight lines. So I'm going to take my tissue, uh-oh, it did blend it a little bit, that's okay. I can use my little trick here that I've been using, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but if you need to erase something, <clears throat> you can go back and erase it with a pencil eraser. Someone at school taught me this, and I thought that was really neat. So. It might not work perfectly, but it might help erase a little bit. Okay. So then um, I have my dark blue here for the flag as well. I already have a dark blue spot, so I could use that same spot <clears throat> on my tissue. Or you could get a new spot. All right, and then <clears throat> I want to make my bald eagle brown, except for the head. <clears throat> head is not brown. The head is white. So I'm going to avoid the head while I do this brown part. <clears throat> hmm, that looks like almost like black. All right. 
and then I need to <clears throat> need to blend that in. You have to be very careful if you want to stay in the lines. All right, and then for the beak, it's going to be yellow. And you might want to look up these <clears throat> this picture for yourself on the internet when you're coloring this in. Um, also, I have um, this yellow oval here, and the tips of the arrow are yellow and blue arrows. Okay, and then um, I've got my beehive that's yellow. And these flowers are actually planted in green grass. Uh, it shows the green grass here. So here's what that looks like. Okay, and then, um, yeah, that's most of that part. All right, so then this, um, these circles are actually rope, um, and the color is kind of this goldish tan. So... I'm going to go around here. Okay. And the same thing near the edge. I might have forgotten to dab some of these spots, so just want to kind of press those in and then go over them. Yeah, the reason I want to do that is because if I don't, then whenever I set this paper under something or um, if something brushes across it, it will get chalk all over it. And it still might a little bit because chalk is like that. Chalk's messy, but at least it's a little bit less likely. Um, okay, so now there is the inside of this um, where the eagle is and it actually says the word industry across the beehive. I forgot to write that. So I'll write industry here. Industry in between the two flags. Um, but I'm going to take this um, blue and starting about outside of the arrows, Under the eagle. Okay, and then um, around the eagle and around the flags. So inside the flags, we're going to keep that part white. And it, it ends up actually being kind of a shield shape with the flags around it. But all the rest of this part has a dark blue background. I'm using lots of dark blue on this today. I know I want to blend it, so I'm making sure that I don't push too hard. If you push too hard, then you'll just have lines and you won't be able to blend them. But if you keep it soft, keep a soft pressure, then when you go back to blend it, you kind of do a circle motion and, and um, rub that in, then it will blend more evenly. Make more smooth, even covering for you your background. All right, so 
now that I have the seal on the wall, that took a lot of work, so um, I like how it has it adds interest to the picture. And then um, the other parts, we can also kind of focus on the person in front. To make sure that focus is still in front, I'm not going to add too much more color in the background. I'm just going to choose one, probably a dark color, probably um, dark blue or gray, to just finish off the wall. Because um, when you see these press conferences, usually they really keep the focus on the person in front. There might be like a symbol in the background, uh, like, like this one, but then they focus your attention on the person in the middle. So I'll mix um, dark blue and gray for my background. And I really like that texture right there. I think that's really cool. It does kind of look like a wall. But I do need to um, at least press it in a little bit or blend it a little bit because, again, I wouldn't want to get it on everything else that is around it in the house and stuff. So. <clears throat> okay. All right. So let me show you my finished one, finished piece. Uh, thank you so much for drawing with me today, and I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.